hi and welcome to my next video lecture on topic function before we continue i would like to suggest that uh, you should go through my previous presentation on topic function because there uh, i have discussed many fundamental things about the functions and if you see that before this particular video then it will enhance your learning experience in this session we will be discussing about second type of function that is known as function with parameters but no return before actually start uh, we start that topic what i want is we should revise the important terms that we have discussed related to the function so you as you know a simple c program will consist of main and you can see in the main i am not performing anything except clearing the screen and displaying a normal message that this is a program for addition no input no calculation no output is performed inside main so this is type 1 function which we discussed in the previous video lecture what we did there is all the commands required to perform input calculation and output we have taken out of main and we have written them inside uh, outside the main as a separate group of commands so these separate group of commands if you observe now it will consist of declaration of variables input operation calculation and output if i enclose this set of commands inside a pair of curly brackets then this is known as function body so this is the first term that you should know about a function a function body must have header so we 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 must have one more line above the function body where we have to specify return type of the function that is void and name of the function that is display so this line is known as function header so this is second term related to the function function header along with function body together it is called as function definition this is third term related to the function and function definition as you can see should be present outside the main function definition tells us about the working of the function that if this function gets executed what it will do so this consists of function definition consists of function header along with function body then since this function is written after the main we need to provide the prototype of this function the prototype of this function can be present can be provided inside the declaration section of the main like this this line void display brackets semicolon is known as function prototype this is fourth term related to the function if we write function definition above main then function prototype is not required but if you write function definition after main then function prototype is necessary now in order to start the execution of the function we need a special command that is called as function call command and this command can be written inside main like this so as you can see display brackets semicolon this is called as function call command so after the compiler executes this function call command it will stop or suspend remaining execution of main and it will start the execution of called function so in this situation main is called as or known as calling function and the display is known as called function so we are having two functions in our program and i have just revised the different terms related to the function now let us start our topic that is today's session we wanted to know about the second type of a function let us again re recall that a simple program normally consists of three main operations one is input second is processing or calculation and third is output and now we have to change our strategy for work distribution in previous type our strategy was main will not do anything and the function will do everything now let us have different work distribution now in this case we will say the input will be performed by main and calculation and output will be performed by function that means main has to perform one task and the function has to perform remaining two tasks 
so it is like this we will have main function where we will perform input that means we will get the values for variables a and b from user and we will have addition function where we will perform calculation that means we will calculate sum by performing a plus b and we will perform output that is we will display sum so we are again using the example of performing addition of two integer numbers but this time input is performed by main and calculation and output is performed by sum now let us see what are the problems that can be that can be present in this situation and how to overcome them this type of a function where the function is performing calculation and output is known as function with parameters and no return this is called as type 2 that is function with no parameter and uh, sorry function with parameters and no return now let us again see the situation what are the variables required in order to perform this task as you can see variables required in main are integer variables a and b because main has to perform input operation so it has to get the values of a and b from the user so i have shown you two variables a and b which are declared inside main what are the variables required with the function the function addition requires three variables that is a b and sum so this function is supposed to perform addition of a and b and store the result into the third variable sum now when we initialize the variables present in main by performing input operation by using scanf command so let's say 15 is the value specified for a and 10 is the value specified for b so they are initialized inside main and one important thing you should note here that we are having two different copies of variable a and two different copies of variable b one copy exists in function main and other copy exists in function addition so two separate memory spaces are reserved for these two copies so though their names are same the memory location they will not will not be same so there is a separate memory location of a and uh, which is in main and there is a separate memory location of a which is in addition similar to b because of this what is the problem if i initialize a and b of main will the same values will reflect in a and b of addition the answer is no the a and b present in the function addition will consist of garbage values this is because local variable problem the a and b declared and initialized in main are local to main and their values are visible only inside main but a and b which are which are declared inside function they are local to function and since they are not initialized they will consist of garbage values in this case what if i perform addition of a and b and store the result into sum what result i will get of course we will get a garbage result because a and b consist of garbage values and therefore addition of two garbage values will result into a garbage now to overcome this situation what we need is to pass the values of a and b from main to a and b of function this is called as parameter passing so this is what we wanted to achieve the garbage value in a we wanted to replace by 15 and garbage value of b we wanted to replace by 10 how to do this this is the problem this can be achieved by using a command called as function call command so inside function main i have to use a command function call command and now you can see the brackets are not kept empty instead of that inside bracket i have written names of the variables a and b now these variables a and b will be known as actual parameters they are local variables of main they are specified in the function call command they will act as sender they can send their values so they will act as senders so now we got senders and a command inside main so values will be sent from main 
but how to receive them inside a function you know when we when the compiler executes a function call command it suspends the main and it lands on to the function header of user defined function so now you can see our function header will be somewhat like this void addition again you can see the brackets are not empty instead of that i have declared two variables integer variable a and integer variable b because since the values are coming from main there should be some variables declared in the header to receive that values these variables int a and int b are called as formal parameters and now when this function call actually executes what will happen the values of a and b from main will be transferred to a and b of function addition this process of sending values from calling function that is main to the called function that is addition is known as parameter passing so to perform parameter passing we need two types of parameters actual parameters and formal parameters actual parameters are local to main and they will act as sender formal parameters are local to function and they will act as receivers so let us see through example how this can be achieved but before i go to the example if you observe carefully that actual parameters are specified without data type only names are specified but formal parameters are declared that means they are specified by sp by writing their individual data types this is a required thing now do we need their name to be same so our name actual parameter names are a and b and formal parameter names are also a and b but is it compulsory that they should have same name no they can have same or different name for example i can send my email to myself in that case sender will be my name as well as receiver will be also my name and still the mail will go this is a rare situation but in other situation i can send mail to you in that case sender name will be my name and receiver name will be your name and these names are different but still the mail can be sent so what is important important thing is their data type we need not have their name to be same but their data type must be same that means if the data type of actual parameter a is int then the data type of formal parameter a must be also int and second important thing is the number must be same means if we are using two actual parameters then we must use two formal parameters i hope you have understood the difference between actual and formal parameters and the process called as parameter passing now let us go to turbo c to see a so small example of performing addition of two numbers by using this method so now you can see i will write i will keep one line reserve for providing prototype of the function which we will write after the function definition is getting complete so now you can see we require two integer variables in very vari in function main they will be a and b then i will write clr scr since input operation is required inside main we will write printf we will ask the user enter two integer numbers and we will read them by using scanf like this percentage d percentage d first value we will store in a second value we will store in p so we completed input operation of two values inside main and we store them into the variables a and p now we need to write a function call command we are going to call a function whose name is addition and we wanted to send value of a and value of b as the parameters so we will specify a comma b inside the bracket so this is a function call command where a and b will be considered as actual parameters and their values will be sent to the function 
so after this the function will start it will perform operation it will display the result inside main what is pending is only get ch and end of main so the main function will now appear or look something like this where input is performed the inside the main and then main will call the function addition now we need to write the function addition we'll write header of that function that will be void addition inside bracket now i need to specify two formal parameters because we used two actual parameters so we must declare two formal parameters so this is header of a function where a and b are declared and they are known as formal parameters because they are going to receive the values from the calling function that is main now the two variable out of the three variables required in addition that is a b and sum two are already declared inside header only one variable is pending that is sum so let us declare that variable sum over here and now we can directly perform the calculation by writing sum is equal to a plus b and we can display the result saying printf addition is equal to percentage d and we will display the value of variable sum that's all so you can see inside the function i am performing two operations that is calculation and output now we need to give the prototype of the function prototype of the function is always same as it's a header so i will copy the header of this function and the line where i which i kept empty for writing prototype there i will paste it so this line will act as the prototype of the function provided you end it with semicolon so this semicolon is important so only one difference between the prototype and header is the semicolon prototype ends with semicolon header doesn't require semicolon prototype can be present inside main header has to be present outside main and above function body so our program is ready let us compile and check whether it consists of any errors so it is compiled successfully we will run it to check the actual output now you can see the main is asking me to enter two integer numbers so let's say first integer number is 15 second integer number is 10 when i press enter it will display result addition is equal to 15 let's see how this actually happens by using the single stepping process so i will again execute this program by using single stepping feature it will start with main will go to clear screen it will display this message to the user and now the computer will wait for user input and now you can see this is input operation and it is performed by main because still we are inside main so i can specify numbers like 15 and 10 where this 15 and 10 will be stored they will be stored inside a and b which are which are present in function main now we will execute the command addition a comma b this is a function call command so main will be suspended and compiler will jump and land into the function header so you can see it has jumped and landed on the function header while going from call function call to function header the compiler will carry the value of variable a and value of variable b that means now a and b which is declared in the function addition will not have garbage values rather they will have the values 15 and 10 now it will continue with the execution of function it will perform addition of a and b and it will display the result once the function is over the main will be resumed that is get ch command and it will display the output and we will be able to see addition is equal to 25 i hope you have understood the process known as parameter passing let us write one more program to achieve the parameter passing now again i will take the same second example which i have taken in the previous video lecture we wanted to write a program to find largest out of three integer numbers but by using function and now again input will be performed by main output will be per processing and output will be performed by function so 
I will keep again first line pending for writing prototype. Now let us think about the variables required. Since input is required to be performed by main, it should read three values from the user. So we will take three integer variables, let's say a, b and c. We will write clr scr. We will give message to the user printf. We will ask the user enter three integer integer numbers. We will read it by using scanf. We will write percentage d three times address of a, address of b, address of c. And now the main will not do anything. After completing input, it will simply call the function to perform remaining tasks. So let us call a function whose name is compare because it has to compare a, b and c and it has to find the largest. And since a, b, c are known, known to main but non, not known to function, we should send them as a parameters. So we should write a, b and c as the parameters inside the function call command. So in this case, this line is known as FCC function call command A, B and C will act as actual parameters. They will send their values. They will act as actual parameters. And then nothing is remaining with main. So we will write get ch. We will end the main. Now we will start writing the user defined function which will find largest and which will display the result. So we will write return type of this function is void. Name of the function we already decided that is compare. And then this function must have three formal parameters because we use three actual parameters. This function must have three formal parameters and their data type should be int. Can we use different names for the formal parameters? The answer is yes. Let us try and check that also. So I will use int x int y and int z as three formal parameters. This is known as header of a function and x, y and z will act as formal parameters. So now when the function call command executes value of a will be transferred into x value of b will be transferred into y and value of c will be transferred into z. This function requires one more variable where it will keep the value of the largest variable. So we will try, we will declare one more variable, let's say int max, where we will get the val largest value out of the three. And now we will continue with the calculation. So how to find largest? I can use conditional operator like this. I will compare values of x and y. If x is greater than y, then we will say x is largest, we will keep it in max. Otherwise, we will keep y in largest, we will keep it in max. But this will find largest out of only first two values. We need to find largest out of three. So we need to use this command one more time. But this time we will compare max with the remaining variable that is z. So if max is greater than z, then we will keep max into itself because it is largest otherwise otherwise we will copy z into max because it is largest and then since we found the largest we will just display the result by writing largest is equal to percentage d and we will display the value of variable max so all the operations that are required to be performed in function are over so we can see function is performing calculation and function is performing output input is performed by main and since the values that are specified by user are present in the variables a, b and c of main and they are not known to the function but they are required in the function, we need to pass them as parameters. So a, b, c are our actual parameters where x, y, z are our formal parameters. But yet the program is not complete, we need to give the prototype of the function and as I already told you prototype is nothing but what is header as it is only you have to end it with semicolon so i will copy the header of the function as it is here and this will act as prototype of the function 
when I end it with semicolon. So this is prototype which I have provided. Let us compile this program now and we will run it. But again, to give you more clear idea, I will execute it stepwise. So when I ask the execution in stepwise manner, it will start with main, clear screen, printf and scanf who is performing this operation main so this will complete our input it is asking me to enter three integer numbers so let's let's say first is 34 next is 67 next is minus 90 so i entered three integer numbers where they will be stored they will be stored in a b and c what are the values what will be the values of x y and z it will be garbage because yet they are not initialized so a, B and C are initialized to the three values that just now I specified. Now when the compiler executes function call command, it will jump and land onto the function header. While going to function header, it will carry values of A, B and C. A will be copied into X, B will be copied into Y and C will be copied into Z. So we are managing to transfer values from calling function that is main to the called function that is compare by using a process called as parameter passing. Now the values are available with the function so it can compare x y first to find largest out of that two that will be stored in max and this max will be compared with the third value z and it is finding largest out of three and that will be stored again into max and we will display the result. So when the function is over again the main will resume at get ch and what we will be able to see is largest is equal to 67. So this is called as type 2 function where we are transferring values as parameters but we are not returning anything. The function is performing calculation as well as it is performing output. Similarly, can you write a program to check the given number is Armstrong or not? In my previous video lecture, I have written that program by using type 1 but can we complete can you complete it by using type 2 so let us try that as a homework I hope you have understood this simple process called as parameter passing so let us recap whatever we have discussed so we have revised the terms related to the function so there are five terms if you rem remember there will be function body there will be function header there will be function definition, there will be function prototype and function call. So these five terms are important. Then we discussed about type 2 that is parameters function with parameters but no return. In this type 2 we have understood one important concept that is called as parameter passing. It is simply transferring values from calling function to called function. Then we also discussed about actual parameters which are local to main which will act as senders and formal parameters which will be local to user defined function and which will act as receivers. So for this time I think this much is sufficient. In my next video lecture we will discuss about third type of a function that is function with no parameters but return. Till that time goodbye.